Hi everyone! Today we are going to be starting a unit called A Snapshot in Time. Every picture tells a story. And we're going to be working through this unit over the next six classes together. In this unit, we will be learning about contemporary artists pictured here, Faith Ringold. Ringold is a painter, writer, mixed media artist, performance artist, sculptor, and activist, and she fought for the equality of African Americans and for women's rights. Also, a little bit more about her background. She was born in the 1930s in New York City and grew up in Harlem in a really artistic environment. Her mom was a clothes designer and her dad was a really avid storyteller, so her creativity was really nurtured and encouraged as she grew up. She was also an educator and she taught in the New York City public school system and also at the college level. And then in 1973, she quit teaching to devote herself to creating art full time. She also makes many types of art, such as soft sculpture. And this is an example up here with the three figures in red. She's also known for her paintings. And these two paintings are from a series called American People Black Light. And the top one is a self-portrait that she did of herself. And she's also the author and illustrator of many children's books, such as Tar Beach, which brings us to one of the things she's most well known for, which are her story quilts. Ringel took the traditional craft of quilt making and reinterpreted its function to tell stories of her life and those of others in the black community. She used canvas paper, paint, and fabric to make these quilts. These quilts were not used as blankets. They were displayed like paintings on the wall. This story quilt is called the Sunflower Quilting Bee of Arlies, and in it are eight influential African-American women sitting together in a field holding a quilt they've made. And it's set in Vincent Van Gogh's Sunflower Garden, where he's also pictured. Next story quilt is called the Church Picnic. And in the Church Picnic, quilting represents an intergenerational activity shared by Ringold's mother and grandmother, reflecting their strong family bonds. And if you look closely, you can see her written narrative she wrote right onto the quilt along the top and bottom borders of this piece. And finally, we have Tar Beach, which is one of Ringold's most popular story quilts, which later became a children's book. And it was inspired by the magic she felt on hot summer nights growing up with her family and neighbors and how they would spend time on the rooftop of their apartment buildings, picnicking and dreaming. And the character flying above in the story quilt is eight-year-old Cassie Louie Lightfoot, and she's flying above what they call Tar Beach, looking down on 1939 Harlem. So we just learned about Faith Ringold, who's a contemporary artist and also a mixed media artist, among many other things. And I'm going to read to you her story called Tar Beach. But before I read it, I wanted to ask you a few questions. And the first one is, can anyone tell me what mixed media she used for her story quilts? That's right. And I also want you to pay attention to the details of the pictures in the story when I read it that visually tell a story. What details from her quilt, as seen on this, these pages, visually tell a story? Faith Ringold's story quilts were like a snapshot in time. Each of the ones we've seen tells a visual narrative, as we discussed in Tar Beach. Each of you will be making your own artwork by creating a visual story based on a special memory, story, or tradition of your own. Now it's time to brainstorm together. Who would like to share a special memory or story? As students share, be sure to ask what details they would include to help the viewer understand their picture better just by looking at it. Now I'm going to explain the directions for your big assignment. You will create a mixed media art piece that shows a scene of a personal memory, tradition, or story of your choice. This artwork will tell a visual story based on the details you include in your artwork. If you choose to make 2D art, your paper size will be 16 by 20 inches. If you choose to create 3D art, your project will be in the form of a diorama. Also note, it's important to be as detailed as possible during the planning stages. We'll go over that in a minute. 
Each of your original artwork will be part of a fifth grade art exhibit that will be displayed in the library. Here are some samples to help you think of some ideas. Now let's get planning. Each of you will be filling out this worksheet to help you think through and plan your artwork. You will describe the memory, tradition, or story scene you'll be making. Name five to 10 details that you'll include in your artwork that will contribute to the visual story, like who is in it, what are they doing, are there any other objects in the scene? Choose if your art piece will be two-dimensional or three-dimensional, and choose at least two mediums that you'll be using to create your art piece. You can also incorporate objects from home into your art piece. If so, list those objects. Visualize your idea for your artwork by sketching it out in the space provided. As you fill out and complete your worksheet, I'll be walking around to help. Once you feel like yours is complete, I'll need to check and approve of your idea before you can begin creating. If there are any students struggling with any steps in the planning process, I will walk around to identify these students based on whose planning worksheet is not completed. I will begin this class by showing students this engaging 10 minute YouTube video about Ringold's life and works. Hi, I'm Faith Ringold. I'm probably best known for my story quilts. I sew them together with pictures I paint on canvas squares. On some of the squares, I add handwritten stories. With my story quilts, you not only get to see great pictures, but you can read about them at the same time. For the rest of lesson two, three, and four, students will continue to work through their creative process by expressing the ideas they've envisioned and bringing them to life. The students will be working in a studio-like environment. I will continue to scan the room and identify students in need of extra support to help them along in their creative process. Also as students work, I will stop the class every now and then to informally make observations and do things like have students who are stuck ask their peers for advice. Critique and observation will be happening as students continue to engage and persist in their work. Before moving on to lesson five, here's a sample of a fourth grade student's work through this unit. This is her planning worksheet. This is how her final project turned out. She incorporated acrylic paint, photograph, collage, and sculpture. Now back to lesson five. So by now your artwork is pretty much complete. So what we're gonna focus on today is preparing your art for exhibition. So you guys have the amazing opportunity to display your original artwork in the library for the whole school to see. So I hope you're all excited about being able to show everyone your hard work and just um, the way you guys were able to express yourself through this project. In order for us to prepare your artwork, there are three things I want you guys to focus on today. So you can refer to them here on the whiteboard. And the first thing is you're gonna write an explanation paragraph um, on a five by seven card that I give you. And basically just write about the story that you're trying to depict in your art, um, who's in it and why, and maybe talk about the different materials that you used and the mixed media you chose. I have a form, uh, a worksheet, if you need extra help with that, that you can refer to. The next thing I want you guys to do is add any finishing touches. Your artwork might need a border if you did 2D, or maybe you just need to fix a few things, but just look at it and get it ready for displaying for the school and the library. And the last thing is, I have a worksheet called Reflection Bubbles, and I want you guys to spend some time reflecting on just what you might have done different, what you're proud of, some of the things that you've learned for this project. So I'll have a worksheet for that to fill out.
And that's it. Prior to beginning this unit, we've had the opportunity to explore over several weeks different kinds of mixed media. So now you guys have all had the chance to create your own original mixed media art piece based on something meaningful to you. So today, everyone's going to have a chance to present their artwork to the class, and the class in return will have a chance to critique your artwork. The students will use parts of the critique burger to critique their peers' artwork. Compliment, observation, question, and suggestion. Each student will present their art and can choose to read their explanation paragraph. In response, the students are to thoughtfully give their input on the presenter's artwork. As students raise their hands to give feedback, he or she should first name what part of the burger they'll be sharing. Have the artist critique their own work using one to two parts of the burger to close their presentation. And be sure to clap for each student.